This is Oscar Bevis for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on the zone. Raven Chapman joins me. Raven, what a pleasure. Good day, mate. Thanks for giving me. <laughs> I like that. We'll come on to the, well, I don't know, more Australian impressions maybe in a little maybe. bit. Um, do you know what's funny? From the first time we started doing interviews, and this isn't me trying to offend, but from the little gym in High Wycombe to Riyadh, <laughs> it's quite a jump. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite been, a story as it's well. It's been a journey, hasn't it, Oscar? Um, yeah, like me and Steve said, when you first started working together, world titles were always always the goal. Um, and we knew pretty soon that we were going to be ready early on. I feel like I've been ready for a few fights and getting the opportunity now. And it's what I deserve, it's what we deserve as a team. You know, we've worked hard for it. I've dedicated the last 10 years of my life to this craft and and lived and breathed boxing and here we are on the big stage where where I feel like I, I deserve to be. Yeah, I know if you would have fought for a world title in your first or second fight, you would have been a dead confident that you would have come away as world champion. But why is that little weight, the little bits of experience that you've picked up, why does that put you in better stead now? Like I say, that experience I've, I've been in with some tough, tough opponents in some tough conditions, um, I've, you know, barely lost around as a pro. Um, and I feel like every fight I just get better and better. Um, my craft, I get better at it. Everything is just more well-rounded. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a proper pro fighter. Um, and yeah, I just feel like I'm, I'm unbeatable. When you say tough conditions, are you talking about boiling hot York Hall? Yeah, yeah, boiling hot. It's tough to watch from a boiling hot York Hall, so I can't imagine how you're feeling in <laughs> yeah, the ring. Yeah, and then time. my first ever cut as well. Yeah. Never been cut ever in in boxing. So yeah, bit of a like um, just head clash happens, but um, so that on top of the heat, on top of a relentless South American fighter there to try and win. Um, and still come through, come through with flying colours, you know? Um, and that's because I've got that grit, I've got that determination, and I've got that mindset of a champion, and I always have done. Not that you're going to expose any weakness to Sky, certainly in interviews, but do you feel like there's any hurdles you haven't crossed yet? I don't believe there is. Well, I say I don't believe there is. I suppose you never know what you're going to get. You never know yeah. what you're going to get, yeah. I believe I, I'm ready for anything that is thrown at me. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say I feel like, yeah, I've experienced everything because I, I don't think you ever can. Every fight's different. Every opponent's different. Even if you fight the same opponent twice, you can't expect the same fight the next time around. So, um, yeah, I feel like there, there's a lot to still experience. You know, this is my 10th fight coming up. Um, but I feel like my personality, I'm very stoic. I'm very well-rounded. Uh, I'm tough. I'm gritty. And um, yeah, it doesn't matter what anyone throws at me, I'm going to overcome it and come through. There was something quite unusual yesterday about the way people were talking about this fight. I know when you talk about featherweights, people chuck the name Amanda Serrano in. But I've never heard so many people talk before the first time that you and Sky have actually fought about the potential of a rematch, of a trilogy. Mm. Does it just sort of show what matchup and how excited people are for this matchup and what type of matchup it is? Like I'm hearing people go, yeah, this is a three fight series, four fight series. You haven't even stepped in the ring yet. Yeah, and I think that just goes to show the excitement around this fight. People have wanted this fight for, for a while. Sky and I have known we've been on a collision course for, for a while. Um, and it, it's something that is much rarer to see in boxing where it shouldn't be. We're two up-and-coming undefeated fighters that are hungry, wanting to be world champion, become undisputed. We're, we're young, we're in our primes. It's very rare you see that these days and that's why it's such an exciting fight and that's why people are talking about rematches and trilogies because I'm sure this will be the first of many between us because like we've both said before, I do believe we're the best in the division yeah. and, and we're facing each other for, for, for the world title and, and that's why it's exciting. It's the kind of fight the fans want to see and it's the kind of style and matchup that is exciting. It's that that ball versus the matador, the boxer versus the fighter. Um, and they're always exciting fights. Yeah, well, episode one to deal with first before we talk about others in the future. Um, I think the first question that got asked yesterday was to Sky, and the first thing she said, well, like the first couple of sentences, she mentioned her respect for you. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, we'd love to see you two go 
back and forth, throw insults at each other. Doesn't seem like that's what we're going to get. A fight where there's complete respect between the both of you, you know you've got business to do, but no real bad kind of intention, at least verbally, yet, should I say? Yeah, not yet. You never know what happens to you when it gets to fight week and tensions are a bit higher, you're a bit hungrier, you know, you're a bit more, you know, jaded. You're getting close fighters to always fight. say when you're a bit hungry. Yeah, yeah, always. You know what it's like in fight week. Um, but I feel like this fight talks for itself. You know, it's a monumental fight. Like I said, we're two young fighters in our prime undefeated coming in to fight each other. First women's world title in Saudi, first women's fight on a Riyadh season card. The fight does the talking for itself. We don't need to fake any needle. And unless there was any real bad blood between us, why, why do we need to fake it? You know, we've got respect for each other. We know she's a good fighter. She's very good at what she does. Um, and she respects me as a fighter and knows I'm good at what she does, uh, what I do. And, um, yeah, that's why that's why it's an exciting fight, you know. I don't need to fake anything. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that you've taken a couple of digs, not necessarily how good she is, but her style and perhaps the entertainment factor in interviews you've done, you've taken a couple of digs of, oh, well, that's the same sky we saw two years ago, that's the same sky, kind of hinting that there isn't as much Nothing entertainment I've as you get in... Nothing I've said isn't true. In, in, like you're hinting that we don't get the same entertainment as you would get when you fight. Yeah, nothing I've said isn't true. It's all the truth, you know. She's very good at what she does. People like certain fights, but... How many of my fights did anyone ever say, oh, that was boring? None. How many people have said that on Sky's fights? Plenty. And as I say, I'm not... It's just the truth. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not making it up I'm to, to create anything, you know? I say it partly in jest, but partly in truth, you know? But it doesn't mean I don't respect Sky the fighter. That's how she is, you know? But I'm always in an exciting fight, and that's what I like to bring. I like to bring that excitement. Yeah, I like it. I think when you said clash of styles yesterday, and, and it will work, I, well, I hope so as a fan, I believe you, but I do think we're in for a really, really good fight. Um, in terms of sitting up there during the press conference, was you cringing a little bit at what was going on yesterday whilst it was all unfolding? Or because there was carnage that wasn't involving you, was you kind of like, actually, I quite like this when Eubank was having his little <laughs> outburst? Yeah, it. it's... It, when you're up there, it definitely feels more cringier on stage than off stage. Um, Where were you looking whilst it was going on? At Frank and Eddie. <laughs> um, I did get a little eye contact with Frank. I could see he wasn't happy. Um, tried to make him laugh a little bit, lighten, lighten his mood um, by doing something silly as I do. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely different when you're up there and you hear it, but... It's still entertaining, isn't it? It's, it's one of them. It's like, oh, what's going to happen? Who's going to say what? Is anyone else going to chime in? I'm surprised Eddie and everyone else kept so quiet, to be fair. So fair play, Frank, for sticking up for himself. Yeah, I was surprised that Eddie was the one who kept his lips sealed. I must admit, I said you didn't get involved in something that wasn't kind of about your fight, but there was a brilliant little, I don't want to call it a rant, like an excerpt from Frank where he banged on about Riyadh season and the positives for about five minutes. And he said to you something about, was it Raven? Something about getting paid or the opportunities you're getting. And kind of brought you in and said, look, this is something that fighters yeah. are grateful for. So fans should be grateful too. And I guess as a fighter who's now going to fight on Riyadh season, you can only echo the words that, that Frank said. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a great opportunity. And as much as anyone, you know, yeah, the only negative I can really take from it is that it's in Saudi and not everyone that I want to be there can be there because they either can't afford it or don't ha have the means to get there or have the time off. And that's the only negative I can really take from it. But other than that, I'm getting my shot on world title. I'm getting it on one of the biggest stages in boxing. Um, it's in Saudi. I'm making history. Yeah, I'm, you make the, the Saudi money. You're making good money and, you know, I don't do it for the money, but it helps. And, and that's what it's about. So everything's there. The only thing is that fan base that the UK brings might not be there. But, you know, you know they're there in spirit and in heart. And that's what you take into the ring with you. Yeah. Well, we spoke about there being a second and third. So I'm sure if you do do it again, you can have one in England. Exactly. Um, do you feel like there's a different sort of impression that you have to make now on Riyadh seasons involved? I know you'll always want to impress, but I think Mark Chamberlain is kind of the example that we all use. Turkey watched him as a fighter on TV and went, cool, I actually like him. Next thing you know, he's on four or five big shows in a row. 
any impression or statement you make, you could basically become almost like a Riyadh season regular. So is there pressure on that or is it just, no, this is a world title fight, forget Riyadh season for a second? Like, how are you feeling that whole? Yeah, I'm looking at the fight as, you know, just a fight that I'm going to win at all costs. Um, I don't, pressures don't get to me really. I, I like that there's pressure in fights and, you know, it's not something that we haven't thought about, you know, talk about, you know, put on a good show, get Turkey to really like you, you know, like your style, blah, blah, blah. All those opportunities are there. But at the end of the day, I've just got to go and do what I do and win. Yeah. Um, and by doing what I do and exciting the fans and winning, I'm sure that is going to be enough. Can you imagine what it would be like to hold a world title belt? Because you've always been so adamant from day one that you'll mm. get one. Like if people get one and they're perhaps not so expectant to at the start of their career, it might mm. come as more of a shock. Can you imagine what it would be like to hold and feel one considering you've always believed that that's your dead set destiny? Like, can you imagine what the feeling would be like? Yeah, yeah, obviously I can I can see it, I can feel it. I, I just can't wait to, till I actually get that experience now and I know it's going to happen.